Hey, it's Waltrip Unfiltered. Thank you so much for joining us. Got a great show for you again today. We're going to talk to Kyle Larson. Larson, the big winner of the All-Star Race a couple weeks ago in Charlotte. And he won it from the Monster Energy Open. That is so difficult. Very few people. Only three have ever done it. Hmm. wonder who one of them was. <laughs> That's right. It was me. We'll talk to Kyle about that. We'll talk to him about dirt racing, golf, his family life. And we're going to talk to him right now. Green play, green play. Well, Kyle, thanks for joining me on Waltrip Unfiltered, my podcast. Appreciate you. Yeah, thanks for having me. I uh, I really look forward to talking to you. I know people know we golf together and we're buddies, but there's so much I want to hear from you about, about your career. And I know if we go back to, to the beginning, it's all about dirt. Uh, do you remember the first time you... You, you got on a go-kart or you got in a, a race car? <clears throat> um, so I remember my dad taking me to, I think it was somebody that he worked with, um, but he had some property and built a little dirt track that they played around. And I don't really remember, like, actually being there. I remember the drive there uh, more more so than, than running. Um, but then my dad built me a little uh, fun cart. It was purple. I remember running some laps in that, and then we sold it right afterwards for whatever reason. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I kind of remember that, but I do remember my first race, um, at Red Bluff, uh, beginner box. I was seven years old. That's in California. eh? Yeah. Uh, North of Sacramento, a couple hours. Um, but I remember I was running fifth in my first race and then, uh, on the last lap kind of for me and a kid, he drove in the side of me and he got collected and, um, yeah, I remember just being bummed out, but, uh. My mom's got videos of every one of my races, so that helps me remember, uh, that remember is, them. That is so cool. I'll tell you this. I'm the fifth of five children, and evidently, by the time I came around, <laughs> my mom and dad were like, eh, over it. Well, he's fine. <laughs> He'll be all right. I, there's no photographic evidence of my existence until like <laughs> I'm 12 or 13, so I bet you it is special. Do you show Owen, your, your uh, son, those videos <clears throat> sometimes? So my mom's posted some on YouTube, and... Uh, you know, I'll, I'll show him some of those. Um, he doesn't, he, he doesn't really understand that it's me. Like he thinks that it's him sometimes. Um, cause you know, he's similar age of, of, you know, the videos that I'm in, but, um, yeah, it's pretty cool. My mom for Christmas, I think, uh, not this Christmas, but the last one, she sent me like two shoebox full of VHSs that she turned into DVDs. So it's like wow. from my, first minutes of being born till you know i was probably 16 racing sprint cars so um really... i can go back and watch every race i've ever ran she's got you know written on the dvds like you know the date the track the results all that wow i'm jealous that's that's awesome your mom it was super that. annoying growing up yeah always having a camera in your face <laughs> but now looking back it's pretty cool yeah what what about the first win when did that come when you when you got going so, yeah, it was, it was like June 10th, um, I don't know, 99 or something like that. But um, so Matt Benedetto is actually the, the kid to beat um, when I was, you know, racing Cycland. Um, you had a pretty baby blue 44, um, really nice stuff, and they were really fast. And he was the guy to beat. We just got a new car, you know, a few weeks before, and uh, – yeah, I somehow won. I don't remember if he finished second or where he finished, but I remember it was just it was a cool accomplishment, you know, winning your first race, but but really cool knowing that you, you know, beat Matt Benedetto. Um, cuz he was winning everything at the time and you know, I was probably lap traffic before we got the new car. So, um, yeah, I remember yeah, June 10th. You know, I always get excited for the races that come around June 10th, which I guess is coming up. Yeah. Um, because I always uh, seem to run really well on June 10th. Um, I don't know if I just try harder on, on June 10th because it's when I won my first race. But um, it seems like I, I typically win on June 10th or my birthday. It, um, I think you're going to race on June 9th this weekend. This weekend? What if it rains it out? You'll hey. Be on, you'll be on let's fire. Let's go, come, yeah. <laughs> come Monday. That's a, that's a great story about Matt. We had him on this show uh, a few weeks ago. And just a, a, a really – a really cool cat you know he, mm -hmm. he it's funny though how the roles have kind of changed you grew up wanting to beat him now i bet y'all he thinks about us beating you <laughs> uh, i don't know um i'm i've been 
I wish he could get some better luck because, you know, now he's finally in a competitive – or a really competitive car, I feel like. And, uh, gosh, it seems like, you know, he's had so much bad luck, more so than I've had this year. And, and I've been rooting for him to do good. So um, – because I've always believed in, in Matt, just, you know, obviously knowing – watching him grow up as a kid and then, you know, putting in all the work to, to be good. So hopefully it turns around for him and uh, he'll start running up front. Well, his Pocono started off a little rough with a spin, yeah. but he recovered for a top 20 finish. And yeah. I, I, I don't know where that team sort of feels like they should be running, but I'm sure it's somewhere between 10th and 20th and yeah. would say, okay, that that's a good step for us. And as you know, it, you got to get those finishes in so you can just keep making your stuff better instead of fixing it all the time. And I'm sure that's where they're at. Yeah, yeah, and that's where I'm at too. <laughs> i got to stop crashing. <laughs> I, I thought I'd turn my season around uh at dover um, for a few weeks and then won the all-star race and then since then i've just crashed stuff again so um but yeah this sport is uh it's tough you gotta you gotta be finishing races to get into a good rhythm yeah and you talked about dover that was an an awesome run and and um then i I don't want to talk about the all-star race and what's happened lately i want to go back to when you first started racing on in cars did you envision being a NASCAR driver as a kid, or were you thinking dirt racing your whole life or Indy cars? How where did you, how did you wind up down here in the South? <laughs> um, so yeah, I mean, World of Outlaws has always been my my first love in sprint cars and all that. But you know, the guys I looked up, you know, to racing, you know, Jeff Gordon, Tony Stewart, and they they were dominating when I was you know racing go karts and and then into sprint cars. And so I always wanted the opportunity to get to to NASCAR in, in race with them. And, you know, I, I knew that's where, uh, you know, American race car drivers made the most money. Um, and just getting to race in front of huge crowds and things like that. Um, but then I got, I started racing USAC in 2011 and, you know, I got there, it was kind of weird. You know, I felt like everybody, you know, when you get to USAC, it's almost like they try and convince you or brainwash you that IndyCar is where you need to go um, because that's where it was back in the day I guess so um, when I got there you know I met some teams I guess you know I I went to Chip Ganassi to uh, you know they introduced me to Mike Hole and I think that was more of an introduction to go IndyCar racing and um, and met with some other teams you know I think I don't even remember the series it is like at Formula Indy Lights? Whatever. Some, yeah, I don't even think it was Indy Light stuff. But I was just never for it. You know, I just wanted to I wanted to make it to NASCAR. And I think I finally told Mike Cole, like, I want to race NASCAR. And uh, then I started winning a lot and then came down here to the south at the end of that year and met with every single race team and uh, ended up signing with Chip. So um, I was glad that I, you know, stuck to my guns and, and chose NASCAR because um, – I love it. You know, it's it's a lot of fun to get to travel every week, um, race in some cool you know venues, um, some great towns, cities, golf courses nearby. So, um, <laughs> and a dirt track, yeah, never too far away. No, you can always find a dirt track close by too. So, yeah, I'm 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 happy in NASCAR and glad I made that choice. Yeah, we're glad you did too. It's it's been a lot of fun uh, watching you get up and running. And and since you mentioned it your top three drivers of all time. And you just said Tony and Jeff. And, and what a tribute that is to those two that, you know, you're a, you're a young racer that, that would have probably gone IndyCar racing. You were an open-wheel guy. And because Jeff and Tony came south, you said, that's what I want to do. They've inspired so many people around this country to do the same thing as you did. They must be up pretty high on your list of, let's say, top three drivers all time. Yeah, I think top three for for NASCAR for sure for me would be you know I think Jeff up there, Tony, and uh, I hate to leave out Dale Senior, but Jimmy Johnson to me is is amazing, and I, I it stinks that you only allow me three because Kyle Busch is is obviously really good as well. So, um, but yeah, you know I, I think a lot of Jimmy, Jeff, and Tony, um, just their styles and. And all that, and what they've done for the sport has been pretty spectacular. So, um, those would be my three three NASCAR guys. I, I love that you picked Tony, Jeff, and Jimmy. You know, obviously, I raced against those guys, but you're younger than than I am. And my mine my, my three are Daryl, 
my brother Daryl, Richard Petty, and Dale Earnhardt. So mm-hmm. it's fun. It's that generational. Two kinda, generations yeah. covered there. Yeah, for sure. Uh, what are what um what are your top three moments of your career? And I want to start by telling you the ones that, and they're going to be different than yours, I'm I'm sure, but the ones that that I've enjoyed the most. And the first was your big win in the All Star race because. You won from the open, and I did that, which reminded me of my my fun I had. But then that big move down the back straightaway, what intense action. I mean, that was an awesome race, and and I loved watching how you performed. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, that was – there's a handful of really big events in in NASCAR, and that's one of them. Yeah. So, yeah, to – to win it and feel like I've been close to winning it a couple times before but mm-hmm. not getting it done, it felt like a big relief to finally get it. And and honestly, too, it felt cool also because going into that final segment, I didn't even think I had a shot. You know, like I restarted, I don't know, 12th or 12th, 13th, 14th, somewhere around there, and only 15 laps. So uh, I was like, well, you know, if I can just get a top five here, that'd be kind of cool. But I had some good restarts, and as soon as, you know, I got – you know, past shoot, probably six or seven cars in the first lap. I was like, wow, I think I'm going to win this. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> the restarts just worked out good. I got good pushes. I made some good moves to block yeah. to get those pushes. Um, so, yeah, that was that was exciting. And uh, to win a million dollars and get a huge, heavy trophy that I can't even pick up yeah, is, is cool. I uh, And you got all those points too, right? <laughs> yeah, I wish. I need, <laughs> need some. Didn't you say in the media center, plus we get points, right? So a couple years ago, I think I'm pretty sure the winner got like five points. Really? I'm pretty sure. Let's just go. I don't know why they didn't. I don't know why they stopped that. <laughs> it don't matter. Yeah. I don't care. Well, that's my favorite moment because of the way you did it. Yeah. You know, you said you charged through it, and then the second thing that I I liked, and I I really didn't know the back drop for this this moment for me but it was the way you way, raced Kenseth at Dover like you were faster than him and it looked like oh maybe I could just use him up a little bit but you didn't do it you hadn't won before and it had to be so tempting to be right there in that close uh but but you just stayed off of him and didn't take that chance what what do you remember about that day yeah I remember oh shoot I remember going a lap down I think early in the race and feeling terrible and then uh somehow we got lucky dog and got some track position and then had a really fast car and uh yeah battling matt what shoot probably last 15 laps or so it was crazy um and then chase also yeah. was in the mix um that was a lot of fun um and yeah I, I decided to race you know matt really clean you know when when matt was around racing i felt like there was nobody cleaner at least to me that than matt kenseth so i didn't feel like it would have been right to move him out of the way I, I felt like you know i felt like he'd respected me and i didn't want to lose that mm-hmm. and um and i don't race like that you know i i, I know people watch and probably be like oh well you've wrecked people in the past and blah blah but um i've learned from doing that mm-hmm. and and i didn't want to do that again so um that was yeah it was fun to battle him and get inside of him a few times and try and just pack air and all this and and having chase there the whole time it, two young guys going after you know a veteran like that was was a blast and an exciting one of the one of the most exciting races I've been a part of yeah I, I, that's why I picked it because I just I was on the edge of my seat <laughs> seeing what you were gonna do and how it was gonna yeah. turn out and then I know the garage i I know i that meant a lot. I felt like I earned even though I didn't win I felt like I earned more respect. Mm-hmm not winning than had I won. That's awesome. Awkward enough. Yeah. And it, it's paid off. Uh, you wasn't long after that. You did get your first cup win, and that was at Michigan. And that is my third Kyle Larson. Biggest moments, my biggest moments of your career. I'm just really curious how yours compare or contrast to those. So my three, um, it doesn't have to be NASCAR? No. Okay. Um, so my my biggest moment would be, uh, my first World Outlaws win um, is 2011. No, Chico. Chico. Uh, gold Cup. You um, were the man at Chico. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so this win my first Outlaw race. Uh, 2011 was a great year. I, I'd already won a bunch of big races leading up to that. Um, and then winning that was just huge. You know, home, I feel like Chico and Placerville kind of, but Chico is, is like a home track to me. 
and the outlaws had won had beat locals there for the past like 30 something years so um to be a local guy and, and win it was was special how did you get a world of outlaws car that was capable of winning was it the same kind of car that you had been racing uh a sprint car is a sprint car. So um, I raced for Brent Cading that season. Um, he's in the Hall of Fame. He's got nice, really nice equipment and uh, smart people working around him. A lot of people working around him. And, yeah, so we had good stuff, good engines, good shocks, good car. I mean, equal equipment to wow. to the Outlaws. So, yeah. Um, yeah, local guys, even though they're local, you know, they still have nice stuff. So, um, But the World of Outlaws guys are used to coming into town and yeah. taking a trophy. I mean, they race so much that they just have more experience and, and know their cars and set up better than the local guys just race once a week. So, yeah, um, yeah it, was, it was, that was, that was, that probably will always be my biggest one. Um, unless, you know, I win some crazy big event. But, uh, I just remember, yeah, like I'm, I make fun of my dad about being a softy, but, uh, I was crying. <laughs> I remember crying for that one. So, um, how old were you in 2011? I can't do the math right quick. 19, yeah. 20, 20, I think at the time. Yeah. Right on. What's, yeah. What's, uh, was mom there with her camcorder? Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. I want to make sure I don't miss that. Yeah. Mom, mom was always there uh, with the video camera. She's still up until a few years ago, I think she finally stopped videotaping my nascar races i'm like mom you know you can just hit record on the dvr and like it'll it'll record the race but uh where does yeah. the four crown night come into your top so moments? so i would say for my career um four crown has been the biggest uh you know part of me getting to where i'm at right now in your chair um just that was my first trip to eldora um in yeah, you know, I was pretty confident that I could win the midget race, um, but the other two I just didn't know, especially the, the sprint car race. Um, so I won the midget race. I beat Brian Clawson to win that. And then uh, in the sprint car race, I started mid-pack, and I was honestly just a mid-pack kind of driver at the time. Uh, I felt like there anyways at Eldora, just being my first time, I was scared. I'm scared anywhere in an all-wing sprint car just because they're crazy, but – um, man, people started blowing tires and, uh, and then I found a good line towards the last half of the race and made up some ground and then people were still blowing tires. Then we had a green, white checkered and, uh, passed Dave Darlin, um, to win that. And as soon as I won that, I was like, wow, I'm, I'm about to win. I'm about to sweep the four crown. Like I was so confident after yeah. that. And then the silver crown race, I still say that's the most perfect race I've ever ran in my life. Wow. Like I didn't. I felt like I didn't make one mistake, you know, running right next to the wall. I was just super locked in and, and confident and swept the four crown. Then I remember after that, we went to like some pizza parlor in Columbus, Indiana, you know, with my family and Keith the next day. And um, yeah, I remember seeing like pre race stuff for New Hampshire, you know, and like them interviewing Jeff Gordon and he's talking about my big wins the night before and Casey and Tony. I'm like, like they know me yeah like well i knew they knew me but i didn't know you know they pay attention still to open wheel racing as much but i was like wow that's really cool and then later that night on wind tunnel uh dave to spain was like talking about me for most of the show i was like this is crazy my name's been on national television all day and then yeah shortly after that is when i started coming down here to, to meet people so it's really what got my name out there and got cup owners paying attention to me all right, first World of Outlaw win, four crown. What's your? So then I would say Michigan, probably. First win. First win, first cup win. Um, just because I had been so close, you know, for three years or whatever it was. I don't know how many second places I had, like 10 or 11 maybe. Um, and, yeah, you know, to to get that win and it was a big relief. Um, you know, there were so many times where I'd be leading late in the race mm-hmm. and, and, you know, feeling like I'm going to win, and then we get a caution with, like, five to go or, or less even and then uh i would just get beat on a restart or or lose a spot off pit road and lose the the control of the restart and um yeah it just i remember i got did a good job side drafting and got to lead and and it was weird i was just like it finally i felt like okay there's not gonna be a caution like I, i'm gonna win this you know with like three to go and i'm like the whole like final three laps going back to me being a softy like i'm like choking up you yeah. know <laughs> I love Brian. that. Um, so, yeah, that was just a 
huge, huge relief. And I remember just like screaming in the car and being all excited. And then I do my interview and I'm like about to pass out. Like I, I was like tunnel vision, couldn't hear. I don't know if you've ever had that, but like I couldn't hear what the interviewer was asking me. I couldn't hear myself talk. I was just like trying not to pass out because I was so excited. That is um, awesome. So yeah, that was that was really cool. And and it locked me in the playoffs, which was big because um, I wasn't going to make the playoffs uh, that year. Um, so that win was huge. And then didn't you beat Chase like uh, on that restart? Yeah, like, Chase. You had been out Chase front. and Denny. I think I had to get by Denny on one of the restarts to get to lead. I think. And then, I don't know, I don't know, vice versa, something. I, I know I lined up next to Chase and Denny for, there was a lot of restarts there at the end. Yeah. Like two or three restarts. That makes it so mo much more rewarding to me. Yeah. Like when you when you have those moments and then you're able to, to, to step up yeah. and accomplish that. Yeah. Uh, we did an interview on, on the race this past weekend with Chip, and he said, Jamie Little asked him what, what he looked for in a driver, and he said heart. Somebody just wants it. You said you were a softie because, you know, you're tearing up, but that's heart. You yeah. Know, that's just passion. That's that's just says how much it means to you. No wonder Chip wanted you to drive for him. <laughs> yeah, and sometimes I think I have too much heart, which get, which gets me <laughs> into the fence. But, yeah, uh, yeah no, it's uh, – yeah, I mean, everybody wants to win, and, and everybody – handles wins differently but uh yeah I mean I feel like I, I work really hard for it and I try really really hard so uh when you finally accomplish it you know it feels really cool you know I, I still I get super excited whenever I win a dirt race you know I win a lot of dirt races but I get just as excited for for all of them tell me about the latest dirt race you won uh, that was last week right yeah Lawrenceburg um yeah won a world of outlaw race last week and uh had a uh Started on the front row with Chris Bell and uh, fell back, and I was able to get back to second. And then um, he made a mistake up on the cushion, and I, I got by him. And then uh, he crashed into one. Um, some people can say it was my fault. Yeah, I wondered how you saw fault. that. Uh, so how I saw it um, was – I saw the video, and I don't know enough about it <clears> to say. Yeah, and, and I, once I saw the video, I had no idea he was even that close, you know, because the last time I saw him – was into turn three when I passed him. And, you know, I had no idea whether he was on my right rear, left rear, wherever. We don't have spotters. We don't have mirrors. We have just our senses, you know, of sound and, and all that. So I, I he never got up to my right side, so I never knew he was even to my right side uh -huh. a little bit. I was expecting him, because I spun my tires all the way on the front stretch, I was expecting him to come by me to my inside. So I wanted to get to the cushion as quick as I could uh, on entry. And I think he... Yeah, I kind of ran off the wall down the front stretch, so I think he assumed that, you know, I was probably going to slide myself. So he wanted to get to the cushion and, and rip enough momentum to get back to my inside on exit. Well, um, I decided to get to the cushion as quick as I could because I thought he was going to be sliding me, and then I could, you know, have the momentum to get by him on the bottom. This is so, all happening, like 130 miles yeah, an I mean, hour in a dirt. Yeah, that and within, you know, two seconds probably, yeah. two or three seconds. So, um, yeah, just I think – he just guessed wrong, and, uh, yeah, so I didn't see him. Over not once. Went. I never saw him. I never felt him. So, I mean, I hate that he wrecked because I don't want to wreck him, especially because I always have a blast racing him, and, and I want to beat him, you know, head up. Right. And, uh, yeah, and so, yeah, it, it was a shame that he wrecked, um, but we'll have plenty more battles for wins for the rest of our lives. Yeah, and would you give him a not? Let me tell you what Tyler Reddick said about you last week. I did Waltrip Word Association, which is a game I play here. <laughs> um, and, and I said Larson. And Tyler Reddick said, um, God took a little sprinkle of awesome racer and dumped the whole bucket right <laughs> into Kyle Larson. And that's who, that's how you turned out. Obviously, you know how it's been fun to see people get a respect for Tyler Reddick mm -hmm. and appreciate how he can wheel a car. He was awesome um, at Charlotte and, and, and again this weekend. Xfinity champion. Underrated, I think, somewhat until lately. Mm -hmm. But I think we've gotten everybody to see how talented he is. Where, where is Chris Bell? Is he right there as, as good as you or good as anybody? Oh, yeah. Um, for sure. I think definitely in a midget, I would say he's better than me. 
Um, I mean, you can just look at his stats in a midget the past four or five years probably. His average finish has to be like two or three. It's crazy how often he wins. Yeah. So, yeah, I think when it comes to midget, he's probably the best I've ever seen. Um, Isn't that awesome to say that? Yeah, it that, sucks, that though, at the same uh, time. You know? <laughs> but I just I love that we're talking about yeah. a guy that is, is with us right now and yeah. he might be the best ever. So, yeah, so, like, before Chris was even well-known, I, I would say, in the dirt track stuff, you know, it, um, bef- like, right before he got hired by Keith, I always told people, I'm like, I'm telling you, Chris Bell is better than me. And they're like, no, he's not. You're crazy, blah, blah. I'm like, I'm telling you, he's better than I am. And uh, he's obviously proven that in a, in a midget. So I feel like in a wing sprint car, we're pretty equal. Um, I mean, I think it's a little circumstantial. I think wing sprint car racing is just tougher in general. So um, your night's got to be more perfect. And I seem to start up front of him more often than you know i don't know if he doesn't qualify well i I haven't really paid attention but i feel like in a wing sprint car um for whatever reason i I outrun him a little bit but but we still i mean he's beat me also in wing sprint cars quite often so um i would say we're pretty equal and then it's so it's hard to judge you know where we rank against each other in in nascar stuff because it's so equipment based yeah and and set up plus y'all are in different yeah World but right dirt, now. but dirt's more equal, and you can get a sense of what drivers are better than the other drivers. Right on. Uh, the The buzz around Nashville, Tennessee, this past weekend was was incredible. Uh, I, I talked to Bruton Smith uh, before the, the the Coke Six Hundred, and he wants to bring NASCAR to Nashville. But we we took the World of Outlaws there this past weekend, uh, and and the crowd and the vibe. It was really really a, a fun atmosphere, wasn't it? Yeah, I just got to watch on Dirt Vision, and um, yeah, it was a, a makeshift track, so the track wasn't great, you know, the first night, but man, the second night, they worked really hard to get the surface good and racy, and um, <clears throat> you know, seeing pictures of the crowd was amazing, it had to be like 10,000 people probably at least, you know, packed packed place was sweet, the grandstands was long, Yeah. you know, high. I grew up in those grandstands. Yeah, I've never been there, so yeah, it looked it looked awesome. And then the race and the feature was good. You know, Shane Stewart and uh, Brent Marks ran side by side for half of it. It felt like, um, and then it started taking a little bit rubber uh, around the bottom again towards the end of the feature. But still, you know, it, it was it was nice to see them have a good, exciting race for the win um, there. Because I was I was worried after the first night. The first night didn't go well for racing. I'm not sure how the event was itself mm-hmm. there, but um, it was nice to see a good race because now I think you know they can make it better for the second year. You know, make some adjustments on the track probably, and and make the racing uh, great. So yeah. um, I think it, I think it was really cool. I, I I always hope for midweek shows so so I can get to them. So yeah, um, it'd be cool if they could move it to a midweek or something. But it'd probably kill the crowd a little bit. Well, I was in 1981. I raced on that quarter mile uh, in a in a mini modified car, and then uh, in 1984 I was able to win on the on the five eighths mile, the big track. That it looks cool. It too. is cool. So like if NASCAR, like there's rumors that they're trying to get a race yes. there, right? Mm-hmm. Like I hope they would keep the same surface. They and would, because it looks it looks like it'd be a great stock car track. It would probably race. A little bit with the surface, you know, like a, a rock and ham. Yeah, you know, that's where cool. you'd really slip and slide. That's but good. My brother was amazing there. He, when he turned sixteen or seventeen, there was he was winning all the races at our local track. And an owner, a guy that had a couple cars down there in Nashville, hired him to come down at, yeah. at that young age and, and race his stock cars. And he he won everything there. And then and then you know the Cup Series raced there back in the seventies and, and early eighties. Mm-hmm. And Daryl strung some wins together, so it, it's a great atmosphere. How's how's everything with your sprint car team? You you you're an owner <laughs> yeah. as well as a driver. I know, right? It's uh, kind of crazy. It's it's cool too. And now my driver is younger than I am. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, Shane Stewart, um, he just turned I think forty this past week. He was our driver before, so it right. felt that felt also weird. You know, me being so young and him being much older than me. And he's, I'm his boss, I guess. But, uh, yeah, Carson's younger than, than I am. But, but he's been doing a good job. Struggled as of late the last few weeks. But, but besides that, man, 
for the first year on tour, I thought he's done a great job. He's got to win, right? Well, got to win at Chico. Um, that had to be cool. Yeah, that's he's got two outlaw wins in his career, both at Chico. So he also got his first outlaw win at at, uh, at Chico. So, um, but no, he's been doing good. He's been consistent. He honestly, you know, he runs hard, but he hasn't tore up much stuff, you know, this year. So um, that's been it's been cool to see, and and I know he's having a lot of fun on the road too. That's awesome. I want to go back to the top three moments. I want to do um, in NASCAR history. <clears throat> And people that listen to the podcast know mine. It's the 79 Daytona 500 when the, when there was a fight, when Kel and Bobby and Donnie all got together. And I'll tell you real quick, I was standing down there in the infield on that fence. And they go by, and and then my brother and Richard Petty were, like, way back. And then those the leaders never came back to the fence. I'm <laughs> like, what happened? Where'd they go? Because, you know, when you're – when you're a kid back then, there's no radio. You yeah, don't know what's going yeah. on. You're just a dumb kid standing down there. But I never will forget being there for that. And then um, uh, my second favorite moment was when Dale won the 500 finally and all the crew guys came out yep. and showed him that respect. That was incredible. And then my third was when Dale Jr. and I celebrated the victory mm-hmm. in 2001, um, our return to Daytona. Now, you, you, are, you grew up – Way after all those things, you know, mainly happened. I know you're probably familiar with them through video. What, what are moments that that have intrigued you in NASCAR? Um, so I'd agree with when Dale won and came down pit road and everybody greeted him. That was that was awesome. Um, and then I'm trying to think of some others. Um, so Tony went in the brickyard was cool and climbing the fence. That, that yeah. remember that? So I, you know, I'm trying to think. You know, like me being there at the track um when when uh Kenseth won um his final cup race at, at phoenix i thought that was really cool you know like yes knowing that this is going to be this guy's well at the time you thought it was going to be his you know one of his last two races right and uh he won and and i remember just thinking like man i hope you know someday like when i say i'm going to retire you know i can get to feel what he's feeling right now um which was really cool i'm sure so uh, i thought that was that was neat and then um <clears throat> i don't know i'm trying to think I'm trying to think of another one another awesome moment for me was the move that denny made on, on matt unfortunately to win the daytona 500 oh, over yeah. truex like when you think about winning the daytona 500 and you want to see a highlight of it. I mean, mm-hmm. what's better than Denny's run from turn four to the checkered? Yeah, and just timing it just right, you know, getting Matt, kind of juking Matt out a little bit and then getting him sideways. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, that was, uh, <clears throat> yeah, and then drag race and, you know, true X to the line was, was crazy. Yeah. But, um, man, I think what Jimmy was able to do, too, of winning all his championships has been, been something that probably doesn't honestly get talked about enough, no. you know. I think in this era, in how competitive and close everybody's equipment is and, and how close the drivers are and how much data there is now to, to make yourself better, I think what Jimmy's done, winning all those championships has been amazing. Yeah, and you know what I loved about – I'm a big Dale Earnhardt fan, so what I loved about Jimmy winning his seventh is, is it gave us a chance to talk about, you know, more about two of my favorite drivers, yeah. Richard Petty, who has seven, and Dale. How – you talked about Jimmy being one of your favorites. He he is class. I mean, mm-hmm. he totally totally fits into the same conversation as Dale Earnhardt and Richard Petty. Yeah, yeah. I think a lot of times you have fans and and all that probably think he's too you know vanilla, I guess, and in all that because he's so he's just such a good guy. Um, I, I don't really know him that well, but. Um, He's anytime I'm around, he's just so nice and and all that and and uh, race is really hard. Him and I race extremely hard with each other, which is which is fun. You know? Yeah, don't you love it? Yeah, I love it. You know, we ha- we actually had like a couple run-ins a f- few years ago, and you know, I I know I was pissing him off, but I was like, man, this is cool. <laughs> like, I got seven-time champion like mad at me right now. Yeah. Like, this is pretty. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. And like, I feel like I'm getting in his head a little bit. So. Um, <clears throat> but no, he's yeah, he's. I mean, he speaks well. He, he he's always you know treating everybody and sponsors and and everyone, you know how you should treat somebody and and you know growing up, you know when I think of like a 
the NASCAR like mold of driver like Jimmy Johnson's that guy just clean cut and just speaks well treats everybody right let's let's move forward in 2018 last year you literally limped into the next round of the playoffs your your roval experience tell me what what that was like yeah well, first of all as a, as a fan <laughs> it was awesome to watch it was so i had a great car uh i led a lot of laps um i was gonna win the race you had it stayed green i don't think brad could have made it on fuel and then uh ricky ricky spun which I feel like Ricky's ding spun at the end of the races all the time when I'm leading. But anyways, so we all wasn't stayed the first, out. Wasn't the first time, was <laughs> no, it? No, no. <laughs> um, but so we all stayed out. And um, so me and Brad on the front row. And it's like a flat, you know, 90-degree corner, you know, turn one is. And uh, we all just misjudged the grip that we were going to have on our tires. And we went it down in there and kind of played chicken with each other because, you know, I want to stay on his right side so I can get position once we get to – the right-handed corner well he wanted to outbreak me to get clear and man we all and we sucked about four rows with us it was incredible <laughs> into the fence it looked like y'all never been there before yeah and got all that damage and instantly i'm like oh crap like that was stupid i'm um, got all this damage i'm not gonna make it through the round i've had great two races you know the previous two in that round were great you know good points days i'm gonna piss it all away because i just tried to outbreak brad kozlowski and then uh so yeah i had all this damage and you know i'm just out there limping around like can't turn <laughs> all that i just like literally could not turn and I, I think i remember you coming on the radio and saying we're screwed aren't we yeah it was the last lap i'm like a half a lap behind the field you know I'm, I'm just getting onto the oval in turn one and they're like coming to the checkered and or i'm like through the through the rove i'm like we're screwed aren't we they're like yep and uh, so I get in, get on to turn one. They're like, they're crashing, they're crashing. So I'm like, wide open, like can't turn, like scrub the tires, go through the, through the chicane, then go through three and four. I'm like, Poof, blow right front. I'm like I'm just gonna, gonna hammer this thing and uh, wide open still hit the wall, somehow get it back into the final little chicane, and then come through and I'm like, oh gosh. Here we go. <laughs> and, I, and the whole time I can see Jeffrey Earnhardt who's like trying to get his car to refire, and. Uh, yeah, somehow bounced off the wall and, and got got the tiebreaker and I think it kicked Jimmy out. So it was it was just crazy, crazy how it all worked out and uh wish I would have made it through the next round, but uh, we got kicked out. That had to almost feel like dirt racing to you. All the <laughs> all the shit you were going through on that last <laughs> lap. <laughs> it was yeah, I don't even yeah, I wouldn't even compare it to it was, that was like just stock car racing <laughs> right there. Just get all sorts of damage and just try and limp at home it was it was crazy a lot of a lot of emotion uh Uh, in those final couple laps and and this year um the big the big all-star win obviously but then the last two weeks while making some great passes and moves and having a fast car you you found yourself in the outside wall but i told people before dover uh on my fox job that i was not worried about you making the playoffs because you got speed and it'll all work out what what is your takeaway of where you are today compared to maybe a couple of months ago? Do you think the cars are fast enough, or do you think you guys are on on track? A couple of mistakes, we can have those. Yeah, um, yeah. I, we just got done with our competition meeting before I came here, and I told them I was like, "Man, I'm really happy with how my cars have been the last couple of weeks. I just need to pull my head out of my ass." So, yeah. um, just getting overly aggressive, really. Um, you like so Charlotte, you know, I line up, felt like we finally got our balance right. You know, I was loose one run, tight the next run, loose tight. We finally got it where it was consistent and good. And I lined up in the second row and just got a bad restart and then got freight train and just got overly excited and was like, I'm gonna I need to make this up, you know, I just need to get back to where I was and, and went in there and slid up into Kurt or Clint and uh wrecked there. And then did, it, did you look at the video? Didn't it look like Clint was was shout like a little, he might have been, but I mean I was your definitely fault. coming up. You said so. it was your fault. I get it, but when I watched it, it was like he looked like he was. And I think maybe coming to so side those guys in front of us got together and got sideways, uh. and I think it like messed the air up because I mean I went in there and I had, had no grip, um, so I don't know if it did like when they got sideways it just punched a bigger hole or something. I lost downforce, you know the air hit on my car, just got messed up, and 
Yeah, it was just I got caught off guard because I was kind of you know, a little free at that point, mm-hmm. and I felt like I slid up. You know, I got really tight. But um, so yeah, I made a mistake there, and then then this past weekend, I uh, had a good car, and, and you know, I'm mad at myself because the whole time you know when we're lined up double file, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna get Denny on this restart, and then. Just chill out. Like you've had a great day. You didn't. Don't crash. You and did not chill out. I did not you chill out. You got more than Denny. <laughs> I seen a hole, <laughs> and I'm looking in my mirror. I'm like, oh come on. I was hoping I could get like enough in front of him where he would get tight and then have to lift. And uh, I mean, I, I guess you know, I was probably clear by like, yo, know, an inch. But uh, he had enough run, and he was trying not to hit me, and came across, and it just got me in the wall. So when, just mad lot, at myself. A lot of people ask me, like, is that is that the spotter's fault? And I'm not even listening to the spotter at that point. I was going to say, like, when I was when I was a good race car driver, the spotter was the second thing. It yeah. was it was me, and then if he said something, I'd say, all right, yeah. whatever. The whole time I'm watching, I'm I'm hoping for him to say clear, just say clear, <laughs> say clear. I'm like, the whole time I'm also like, I'm I'm gonna try and fit in that hole. Yo, know, or or make him give me that hole. Yeah, but uh, just didn't work out. Yeah, that happens. That gets us up to up to today. What's uh, you had a competition meeting this morning? You said a little little golf this afternoon. Perhaps I know how much you enjoy the game. I know. I, I was hoping when I came here. You look like you're in a golf attire. I was like, oh, sweet, and go golf. But uh, no, I don't. Mondays suck. Like, yeah, I wish courses would open on Mondays, or at least where we're members at. You know. Trump or or Charlotte is uh you know not open on Mondays. Peninsula's not open on Mondays, and that's where we golf all the time. I don't even think River Run or any of those are Seems open like on could Mondays. Rotate it, yeah. Where we could ask a buddy, could we come over to his place and play? One <laughs> yeah. Day? So yeah, I mean we only have shoot three days at home during the week, yeah. and I look forward to golf. And Mondays are you know my afternoons are usually calm, but they can't golf. And then tomorrow I'm leaving, so tomorrow it actually works out good. So. Um, been flying with Denny this year, and uh, I'm racing tomorrow night with the Outlaws. Um, but he's testing in Indy, so I'm gonna ride with him to Indy in the morning. We're leaving at like 6:45. Me and JP are gonna go play 18 at the Brickyard. Ah, uh, <clears throat> I love then, that course. Uh, play 18, get done, hop on the plane, and go drop me off at the dirt track and uh, go race. What what town is that? I'm racing in Fairbury, Illinois, mm-hmm. and then uh, so I race with the Outlaws. At Fairbury, Illinois, and then I'll go to uh, Gas City uh, with the USAC Midgets on Wednesday, and then Putnamville on Thursday, and then drive all night to Michigan to practice on Friday. And then I think we're going to, I'm trying to line it up with Brian Jackson to uh, see if he can hook me up to go golf. I looked up, anytime I go to a state, I look up the best golf courses in that state, and then look up like where it's located at. Uh-huh. And uh, it's called Crooked Stick Golf Club. Yeah, and I it's, played there uh, before. Oh, have you? In Indianapolis. Yeah, so yeah. it's like 15 minutes where, from where I'm staying uh, Wednesday night. So I was thinking Thursday morning, right. I'll go golf before I race. I know a guy that, uh, I think the guy <clears> that owns the Colts owns it. Oh, really? Or not, maybe he just lives there. Ursa? Yeah. So, so, yeah, hopefully I can get on there and play Is that Thursday who morning. The Jim Ursay. Jim Ursay. He owns <laughs> He's, he's there, so. Yeah. Between. If you want to golf, just come on. And yeah. Come golf, I'm, watch some dirt racing. I'm, you can catch a ride with us to Michigan. I'm liking what you're saying. I love all those. I'm like you, man. I, 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 I'm I only, I'm old, but <laughs> I love to, I love dirt racing. I love watching you guys. What do you think about old Kenny Wallace? He's, <laughs> he seems to get it around pretty good in those uh, IMCA modifieds or yeah. whatever he races. It's been cool to see Kenny, too, because I don't know much about his background, you know, but. Um, I don't think he did really any dirt racing up until the last, I don't know, 10 years or yeah. less. And uh, he loves it. Like so, he, It's cool to see his passion and his excitement for, for dirt racing because that's obviously what I love a lot. Um, so, yeah, just seeing him, how excited he gets about going dirt racing or, or all that is uh, it's pretty cool. Yeah, his buddy's Schrader, and yeah. so that's all Schrader is about. And when, when Kenny was like me, I never grew up on dirt. I was a pavement guy, and then when – in the 90, 80s and 90s, we would go off six, eight cup drivers would go to yeah. these little towns. Yeah, and, I've heard about that. And race dirt cars. Yeah. And I was, I, I got to be pretty good at it. I could yeah. beat, beat those guys. And we raced at Grass Valley, actually, which is where DeBenedetto's from. Yeah. So you've probably raced there. No. No, did I it never. Did close? Yeah, it closed. Yeah. Caitlin's dad used to race there a little uh-huh. bit. But yeah, I never went there. 
Must have closed before I was born. You said Caitlin's dad. Her brother's your brother in law, he's he's having a good year in that uh, Napa sprint car. Yeah, yeah. Brad's been really good the last well, for a long time, but really the last few years, you know, I feel like he's uh he's really smart too when it comes to setup stuff. So he's they've been able to dial their car in a lot and his car looks really good. Like it handles great. Well, um, will he be who you have to beat when you go racing this, this week? Yeah, yeah, I mean uh, it's a it's a small track, so it's a really small quarter mile, so that kind of evens the playing field out a little bit more. But um, we were really good there last year. But yeah, Brad, Brad, it's been fun to watch because he, I mean, Donnie Schatz has been you know dominating sprint cars for, I mean, since ever, yeah, for a long time. I mean, even when Steve Kinzer was towards the end of his career, you know, he was Donnie was the guy. So um, Brad's been working really hard to to beat him, and and you know, Brad won the Knoxville Nationals last year and beating Donnie on a you know, green white checkered like that was was awesome um so i think i think he'll be able to give donnie a run for his money in the points this year um brad's you know he's you know getting to his prime you know i think they say prime is when you're in early 30s and mm-hmm. he's 32 or 3 right now so um he can put a full season together and he'll he can challenge donnie night in night i actually think his car is a little bit better than donnie's right now too that's awesome I know Owen likes to go to the dirt races with you. Audrey just turned one. How's everything going with her? Good, good. Yeah, she's uh, she's finally walking. So uh, she looks like a little drunk girl walking, but uh, <laughs> she's she's walking. Um, she's, I love. I mean, everybody loves their children, yeah. obviously. But um, I love it a lot. Owen's a blast. Owen's getting to the age where you know he'll start go kart racing maybe in the next couple years. Um, and then Audrey, she's just always so happy and and fun and always smiling. Um, She's a little bit tougher baby than Owen was, just because Owen was like never sick, no allergies, nothing. Audrey's got dairy allergies, so we gotta like watch that. <laughs> she, uh, we had to spend a night with her in the hospital um, a few weeks ago because her platelets were low, so she was getting like bruises really easy and and all that. So they had to monitor that. Um, she yeah. spit up on me forever. I felt like I hated that, and her, the formula stinks, by the way. So. Um, <laughs> But yeah, she's been she's been a lot better here lately, so um, it's fun. I love. I'm glad I had kids at an early age. Yeah, I want to uh, thank you for the coke, by the way. Cheers. Cheers. And I want to tell you one of the coolest pictures. I know you're going to cherish it for the rest of your life. Was was hoisting Owen up when you won won the All Star race. That was pretty cool. Yeah, yeah, that was that was cool. And then, see, so yeah, I won the All Star race and did that, which was awesome. The pictures from that were really cool. And then winning the All Star, or sorry, winning the Outlaw race at Lawrenceburg. A little bit sketchier. I got all the way up on top of the wing with him, and uh, he's getting kind of heavy. So <laughs> I'm not the biggest guy, obviously. So um, there's baby oil and stuff on the wing. So it was, it was a little slick, but uh, yeah, he he always he always asks, you know, if if I win a sprint car race, can he get up and do the wing dance with me? So um, we got up there and and uh, did that. So it's been cool to win some races in front of him the last few weeks because. Uh, yeah, I feel like he's forgotten that I'm a good race car driver because I haven't won a, a lot, <laughs> at least in NASCAR. So it was cool to get the all-star win and, and show him that I do or I have won. Yeah. Uh, I, one last question, and I'll let, I'll let you go. If, if, all the money, if all the money went away and it was just about lining up and racing, uh, I would still prefer in my prime to line up versus the cup guys at – Bristol or at Daytona and and beat them despite whether it paid anything or not that's where I, I would that's what I would do would would you go to Eldora and beat those guys or would you want to line up against the, the cup guys and beat them I don't know um I, I honestly I I don't really know how to answer that question because I love like you said Bristol like Bristol to me is where you know, talent kind of takes over in a, in a stock car. And so I get really excited about going to Bristol, and I ran really well there and led a lot of laps and ran second a few times mm-hmm. to Kyle Busch. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, honestly, I would say, yeah, I would love – like, I, I wish we could just race Bristol every freaking week because yeah. um, it's so fun. But then – but then and, I, and it's so tough, too. You know, it's a challenge in, in stock cars. But um, sprint cars, yeah, if you could – I haven't got the chance to race like the Kings Royal or something, but but racing the Kings Royal um, against the best guys there, you know, would be would be cool. This was uh, my helmet the day I was driving that car at Bristol. 
in 1990, oh, and that's a, that's best we can figure a tire drug across my, my <laughs> head when we had that crazy crash. Yeah. So that's that picture on the wall over there too, right? Yeah. Gosh. Can you imagine that? No. No, I don't know how. You're a big dude. I don't know. <laughs> there wasn't enough. There wasn't enough room for me, was there? <laughs> I don't know how. I don't know. Gosh, that's crazy. And then it, did it happen to you first or me? Mike Harmon, he had the yeah. same exact yeah. thing, right? I used to tell Harmon, you screwed up. You did it during practice. Nobody really saw it. I, was, <laughs> I did it during the race. Yeah, man. <laughs> I can't imagine. Like, I, I mean, I had a bad crash at you know Daytona and ripped oh. you know, the front half of my car off. But, like, you you, you I didn't peeled any... that thing open. Yeah. What, what, do you, what do you remember about that crash, Daytona? That was crazy. So, yeah. So, um, my first, first Xfinity race ever. And I was running good, you know, and I was, I think we were all drafting off of four coming to the line. And I was probably sixth, seventh-ish, eighth, wherever I was with my, because we tandem back then. Um, but then, yeah, they started shot at the track and crashing, and, and we're all just wide open at that point, just not really having a care in the world for who's sliding across the track because you're just trying to get to the finish line. And if you got to plow through somebody, you're going to. Um, but, yeah, somehow I got, like, somehow lifted up in the air and uh I was like oh all right we're flying <laughs> um and and nothing hurt you know like I remember getting up in the air it gets quiet you know I I guess I didn't really know I got into the fence um but then I came down and I'm sliding to the infield and uh I didn't realize how damaged my car was yeah. but you know I'd seen some like flames coming in so I was like all right I gotta get out of here quick and got out, and the first thing I'm thinking of, I look at the scoreboard, because I'm like, all right, I was like six, seven, you know, some guys crashed, maybe I finished top five, and I was like, going down, like, oh, 13th, really? Like, dang it. And then, uh, at that point, I saw the front of my car, I was like, wow, that must have been pretty big, and, uh, you know, then I get into the ambulance, and I'm, we're, we're rolling down pit road, and I remember glancing out the window, and there was a big, empty section, you know, no people, they were like, right at the start, finish line area. And I got really nervous. Uh, I was like, oh, my gosh. You know, knowing that I got the catch fence because the front half of my car was gone. So I was like, man, this is not good. Like, somebody's, you know, God, there's got to be one or multiple people seriously injured. Um, so I was I was really, really nervous. And uh, thankfully, you know, nobody lost their lives. I know, I know a handful of people got injured and, and pretty badly injured. But, but thankfully, nobody got uh, killed. Yeah, that, that was... That was, I remember how violent it was, how quickly your car yeah. just ripped And I didn't off. have a scratch, bruise, sore neck, mm. nothing. That's crazy. But that shows how safe our cars are, are now. Yeah. Yeah, that one, that one wasn't so safe. <laughs> no. I look back at, dang, stock cars from like, what are we, 2019? Like, 2008. I'm like, God, these things don't, yeah. <laughs> don't look safe you at all. You know what's crazy is, is, you know, we lost Dale, and before that, like, we... we we lost guys got killed yeah doing what we did and you know we we'd get out get out of the car and be like man that sucks and then just get back in and go yeah i like, mean that's like same, it wasn't happen to us same thing you know going on in sprint cars like i mean we lost uh, at least a couple guys last year you know well known guys jason johnson and greg hodnett and you know, i've lost brian clausen who i was pretty close with but yeah i mean you just always like, oh, I mean, it, you hate it, but you're like, I never think twice about getting back in a, I was the same in way. a race car. I raced the next day at Bristol. Yeah. I used a different car. Really? And they, they fixed that gate. Where is that car? That car is in the museum in, in Talladega. Really? Yeah. The only thing they don't have is the trunk. Because <laughs> <laughs> when they came to get it, I, I asked my buddy, I said, could you swipe that trunk for me? So that, oh, yeah, that's it. Yeah. Well, thank you so much, Kyle. Yeah. Enjoy chatting. Thanks for having me, Mike. Yep. All right. That was awesome. I love catching up with these drivers, getting to know them a little bit better on the personal side. I hope you're enjoying it too. If you are, please rate us. Give us a five-star rating and go to your favorite podcast app. Tell your friends and add us, Walter Unfiltered. We're going to be back next week after the big race at Michigan, and we'll see you then.